My name is Keith Lemon. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to share with you one of my experiences. It's going to change your life. Just come with me on an adventure and share with me my experience. In Psalm 43:3, the Bible says, Pour into me the brightness of your daybreak. Pour into me your rays of revelation truth. Let them comfort and gently lead me onto the shining path, showing the way into your burning presence, into your many sanctuaries of holiness. I was raised since a baby in the church, and I was taught that Adam sinned. When Adam sinned, creation fell with him. I never understood this, it made no sense. How did the creation fall when Adam fell? I've never heard ministers talk about it. You know, the mysterious murky waters of what happened and the connection between Adam and the creation were never touched upon. So I've had this question for many years, 25 or 30 years. I've asked God many times, Father, what is the connection between Adam's fall and creation's fall. On November 7th, 2016, about 9.30 in the morning, I was at work. I was sanding parts of my spray booth. It was a normal morning like any other. Beautiful, crisp November morning. And I was in my shop, sanding my parts, thinking over this question once more, really seeking God. Father, tell me why and how the creation fell in Adam. And within seconds, the air in my room changed. Right in front of me, three feet in front of me, from the floor up, the, the air just changed and became a doorway, a, a large oval portal, maybe six feet wide, eight feet tall, Right in front of me, in this opening, is this white mist. You know, if you go out on a, a rainy night with a heavy mist, the mist is just flowing, it's, it's there. Heavy, dense fog is what was in this room. And it was actually gently billowing out into my space. And so, I believe the Bible, you know. I believe that Jesus made the way for me, but he's the door. He said in John 10, I am the door. By me, those who come in will go in and out and find pasture. I believe that. And so, you know, that ancient hymn that I've sung for years says that he opened the life gate that all may go in. So I took the only reasonable step and I stepped through that doorway, across the threshold and into the mist. And there I stood. It was on my face, I could feel it. It was tangible. It was a tangible substance. Way out in front of me, 100 feet, 200 feet, I don't know. But the room was glowing. There was a glow way up ahead, like a city on a rainy night that's way out in the distance. You can see the, the glow of the city skyline in the distance. 
that's what was way up in front of me in this, this white room. This room had no walls. It was like a vault. No ceiling, no walls. I couldn't see the floor because I was in the mist now. And all I knew was there was a light way out in front of me. And so the only reasonable thing to do is to step into it. So I took a step. And when I did, I went forward 50, 75 feet. I don't know. I, I was in the mist. But that light got closer to me. And when it did, I noticed that it was a blue glow, not a white glow. It had changed to a blue, probably because I was closer to it. And also, it was at that first step that I began to hear a man singing and humming. I couldn't make it out. It was in the distance. It was soft, but it was humming and singing. And I had to know more. And so I took another step. And when I did, I went forward another 50 or 75 feet. I can't tell. But that light just got much closer to me. And as I stood there, out in front of me, maybe 20 feet away, was an opening. And I saw this man. His body was maybe eight or nine feet tall. And he was in the form of Vitruvian Man. If you've ever seen Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, medical man, arms out, feet spread. That was the shape of this man, the, the body position. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, why am I here? And what is this? What's going on? And at that point, my attention was drawn to the blue light. The humming, the singing was coming out of this light. And I looked into the light, this blue glow, and I could see a man in there. I, his back was to me. His hair was white. It was alive. And it hit me that this is Adam and this is God the Father. And I was watching God the Father singing in the Adam. At that point, I heard the language. The language that God was using was a heavenly language. It wasn't English. I had no idea what he was saying, but my spirit picked up what he was saying. I could understand what he was saying to him. What God was doing was he was singing Adam's destiny to him. He was telling him the exploits he would do in the future, how much he had longed for this time. At that point, I noticed God the Father's body. His body was profusely generating these rays of light, needles of light, millions of different colors, colors we don't have here. Uh, some of those lights, some of those needles were like, they were like pregnant capsules of energy, of frequency. I assumed that wherever they were going, they were gonna release something in the future, somewhere else. It was amazing. And also, you know, I could see that everything these needles passed through was designed to receive their sustenance from this light. God's, God's light, His energy, was, was giving life, purpose, destiny, expression to everything that it passed through. They were passing through me. They were warm. I could feel them going through me. And they were just giving life to everything. The very next thing I saw was that God the Father, he reached into himself. Now I was behind him. I'm looking at God's back and Adam's face in front of me. Adam was facing him maybe 15 feet away. I watched God the Father reach inside his heart and his being right here. He pulled out part of the substance of himself. He pulled it out and gently compressed it and moved forward and put it right into Adam's chest. Right where he took it out of himself, that's where he put it into Adam, right inside his body. And he gently released it and pulled back his arm and relaxed. And when he did, that little ball of, of God's substance exploded in Adam. It filled his, I watched Adam's body just turn to light. It just lit up from the chest, out his arms to his fingertips, down into his legs and into his feet. And Adam's body glowed with the same light that God had. 
you know, Adam's body was like, it was translucent. It was like diamond dust skin. That's the best I can describe it. I could see his organs. I could see his blood vessels, his sinews, his hair, his, his crotch. His privates were covered by the mist. The mist never revealed his, his midsection, but it went around him, and I could see clearly what, what I was looking at. And at this point, wow, the, the music. I had suppressed the music. I had suppressed the angels because I was so focused on what I was seeing. But once the father relaxed and Adam's body exploded with light, the, what I was hearing the whole time came into the foreground, which was music and singing. The whole time was playing this beautiful music, exquisite music, ups and downs, high notes. The angels were singing back up for God the whole time. Angelic choirs, they weren't all singing the same song which is really awesome. It was like there was a company of angels that had their own song they were singing. And as one angel hit the high notes, as one company would go high, the others would taper off and let them crescendo with whatever they were singing. And they would come down off of that. And as they came down off of that, another group would rise in their crescendo of whatever they were saying. It was almost like, like the Northern Lights you know, the Northern Lights, you've, you've got purples, greens, blues, yellows. They've got their own body, but they, they interweave, they join each other, and then they break apart. That's what this angel singing was like. It was not a cacophony. It was not mayhem. It was beautiful perfection. The melodies just flowed. They flowed in and out like a tapestry. It was beautiful. Um, the next thing I saw was as the angels were singing, the, mu the music's playing, God the Father's still singing. I see this banner, this white thing in the sky in front of me, moving towards me. And it's maybe 18 inches tall by 15 feet, 20 feet, I don't know. It came like a wave. From the left view, it rolled just like this. And as it came across my field of vision, the angels are singing, the music's playing, and I read in English, it says, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for glory. And it, I read it and it passed off into the, my right field of vision and vanished. And so I'm, I'm sitting here and processing all of this. And at that point, the, the singing tapers off the lights just slowly get softer and darker. The angel voices start to taper off, which I took as my cue that this experience is over with. I've, I've seen what I need to see to answer my question, and it's time to go. So I, I took one step backward, and my body moved back 50 feet. I took another step and found myself at that threshold, that doorway, and as I stepped out through it and into my shop, I watched the air close again. That portal just closed up just as it opened and went right down to the floor and just, it was gone. And I was back in my shop. Now, that's an amazing, that's mind blowing. I was, I wasn't even crying at that point. I was mesmerized. I was, my brain was numb. It was, my brain was like a blank sheet of paper. I had no thoughts except what I had just seen. That whole process filled my mind. There was no room for thoughts of anything else. I had no questions. I was, it was full of what I just experienced and witnessed. And so when I stepped back for the next 20 minutes or so, the next 30 minutes, I was in a buzz. I was worthless at work, really. I couldn't work. I was just stunned and chewing on it and thinking about it. Well, that was a Monday morning. Four days later, Thursday, which would have been, I guess, November 10th or 11th, I took my wife to Breckenridge, Colorado uh, to a conference. We had planned this trip months in advance. Thursday was the day. We went to Breckenridge, Colorado to a Nancy Cohen conference. At the conference, John Tussie was 
on the music docket. That's what I would call it. He was playing. Saturday morning comes, and about nine o'clock, our session started, our, our little service. And 9.30 rolls around. He's playing worship music on a synthesizer. There's maybe a five member band. And John led us into this sound of, of free worship. It wasn't a song, it was free worship. We were just encouraged to express our hearts to God. And we stayed there for five or 10 minutes. And while we went into that sound, I realized this is very familiar to me. I, I asked God, I said, Father, what is this? Why is this so familiar to me? What, what's going on? And instantly, I found myself back in that vault, watching Adam, the Father, the singing, the angels, the music. And it was like I was hearing the same, the same music, the same sounds as I heard Monday, like a, like a template. And I cracked. I mean, I, I really cracked. I, I was just bawling. I was convulsing. I, I didn't want all these women who I didn't know. There was probably 150 people in the room. I knew almost none of them. I didn't want them to see me blubbering and convulsing and crying. And so I stepped forward behind this concrete column, put my nose on it, and just let loose. I just convulsed. I cried. I sobbed. All the years, 25 or 30 years of questions and seeking that went unanswered by heaven, just all of a sudden met right here, right now. You know, not only did I have this experience Monday, but here I am listening to this man up on stage play the music that I heard five days earlier. And I, I just was undone. I was undone by it. So... I'm glad to say today, John Tuss and I have become friends with this experience. Uh, he knows that I've heard his music, I've shared with him, and it's, it's wonderful, it's awesome. So that's been two years ago, two and a half years ago. I've had lots of time to process it, to think about it. I wanna tell you that many portions in the Bible, especially the passages with God's light, it's all over the New Testament, the Ephesians, John, Isaiah, the Psalms. The Psalms are profuse with passages about God's light, His revelation bringing us light. I just read Psalm 43 when I started this. That's one of them. And, uh, you know, I want to read to you one small portion that I've taken away from this experience. It's very short. I've had a lot of, a lot of processing. And I think it would come down to this. Before I read this, I just want to state that, you know, Adam, when I was in that place, I saw, I saw Adam's body humming with the frequency of not just his life, but all of his descendants. Do you realize the Bible says that in Adam, all died, so in Christ, all are made alive. So if we were in Adam to death, we were in Adam for life. You, me, all of us were in Adam when he was made. Which means that the frequency that you emit, the frequency of your life, that's it's individual to you, that was in Adam. Adam's body hummed with a composite frequency of all of his children throughout the generations. And God, God could hear all those little frequencies of, of the future. God could hear your frequency that he made in Adam before you were ever here. He could hear it. He could pick it out in the crowd, in the symphony. And that's just mind blowing to me. And I, I saw that, I witnessed that, I could feel that. The love that God had for Adam and for all his descendants, I could feel it. It was tangible. And so I just wanna read this to you. Adam was crafted as a glory carrier for God. In Adam we fell. We're fallen creatures in Adam by birth. We fell away from God's glory. But I've noticed that the people in my life who have had the greatest impact on me are the few that have brought God's life to me. Those who exude the light and glory of God, the, the radiant splendor of Jesus, 
those are the ones that have drawn me the closest to them. And the reason is, is because they draw me into my home, God, the Father. They take me back to Him. They take me to His heart. You know, John the Baptist was one of these. Jesus said of John, he was a burning and shining lamp. That's why the flock crowded him by the thousands, maybe the millions. John brought the radiance of God to the people, and it drew them. You know, Steve Swanson sings a song where he says, um, he says, no one can fill this hunger in me but you, Lord. So what is this hunger for God? What is the thing in us that draws us to God? What is it? I think I know. The deepest part of us wants to be recalibrated. We want to be recalibrated back to our original setting. The only thing is, Adam's been recalibrated. We're not being recalibrated or reset to Adam. We're being calibrated and reset to Jesus. Jesus is our life. We're in Him. God put us in Him at Calvary. So, our calibration points are His. It's a kainos calibration. It's a completely new thing. And that's what's so amazing. They're Jesus plug points. We're being plugged into Jesus. And that's why the Bible says that we go from glory to glory. Our life as a Christian, as a son of God, is being plugged in more and more into Jesus blood points so that we look more and more like him. We function more and more like him so that when he comes back, when Jesus comes back for his church, it's going to be a church that's just like him, a wife that's doing his works. And that's what's amazing to me. That's the thing that I've taken from this the most is that God put his life into Adam at first, and Jesus is doing it a second time in his church. We're being filled with his life. I hope you have enjoyed this story of mine. I hope you've enjoyed coming on the journey with me and stepping into it with me. And I hope it changes your life. I hope you realize that Jesus is all in all to you, and you can go into heaven with him. The door is wide open. It's wide open for any son or daughter of God. Enjoy, my friend. God bless you, and may you go into heaven and experience the fullness of the true Christian life, what it is, what Jesus died and paid for. God bless you.